Hey guys, I'm Jesse from KarateByJesse.com, aka the Karate Nerd. And in today's video, you're hey, gonna yeah. get the This is how most people think that karate is supposed to be used in a street fight. But of course, we all know that this shit would never work on the street. So if you want to learn how to actually use karate in a real street fight, then keep watching. So let's say somebody on the street wants to fight you. Now, of course, you should never go around fighting people. In fact, the key philosophy of karate is known as karate ni sente nashi, which means that karate is a defensive art. It should be used to defend yourself, not to attack others. But sometimes you may not have a choice. So let's say we're gonna fight here on the street. We're gonna start at a distance, which is exactly the point of modern sports-based karate. And you wanna maintain this engagement distance in your favor at all times, because the person who controls the distance controls the fight. Why? Because I can dictate where the fight takes place if I can always position myself accordingly. Meaning, at this point, you need to use your footwork, what we call ashi sabaki in Japanese, and tai sabaki, body movement. So let's say that we're fighting. You're gonna be wanting to attack me, right? Yeah. So you're moving towards me. But what I try to do is always maintain this type of safe space, this distance between us. Now, that gives me the choice to either take space or make space, which is why I'm controlling the fight simply by adopting and adjusting according to my opponent's movement. And this, of course, is what modern sports-based karate is so good at because it starts at this distance. <laughs> So whenever a street fight starts, you need to adopt the mindset and philosophy of modern sports-based karate and maintain this combative engagement distance known as ma'ai in Japanese, which is a combination of two things. First, the line of attack going between you and your opponent. And secondly, the line of defense, which is the line that separates us. And the ability to control this means that you can control and dictate the outcome of the fight. But what happens when you get up close? Well, that's when you need to move away from the sports-based karate mindset and into the traditional space. Because you gotta understand that a street fight doesn't really have any rules. And old school traditional karate didn't have any rules either because it wasn't a sport. Meaning, just look at the list of forbidden techniques of modern sports-based karate and see if you can attack those targets on your opponent using the weapons like elbow, knee and headbutt that you want to use up close which of course is stuff that you can't really use in sports karate and these moves can easily be seen in many different types of kata these old geometrical movement patterns for example elbowing somebody in the face or kneeing them in the groin techniques that are forbidden when you're competing but perfect for the street because they can stop a fight just like that all right, so now that you understand that the key to using karate in a street fight is to be able to combine modern sports-based karate with traditional old-school karate, I want to show you three examples. Because sometimes you might get attacked before you have a chance to even create that sense of engagement, distance, and take control of the fight. So I'm going to show you the three most common ways that you could be attacked in a street and how you could use karate techniques to defend yourself. The first and most common technique that somebody might want to use against you in a street fight is the infamous haymaker, which is like a hook punch but way longer because the person using it usually lacks technique. So let's say that I'm attacked with a haymaker here and I don't have the ability to maintain the perfect distance to always be safe. That means I need to close the gap. So when the haymaker comes in, I want to be inside of it, okay? Not out here where I get smacked in the face and of course if I have the ability to move away I should do that but sometimes you might not have that ability so you want to go inside of the haymaker where there is no power it seems like a paradox but it's actually safer in here now at this point you want to 
kind of lift your hands into a technique that looks like it's taken straight out of a kata because there are many of these old school karate forms that use this type of defensive posture sometimes with closed hands sometimes with open hands all right so the haymaker comes in i step inside and i use my passive arm here the one that is not blocking to actually hit him straight in the face and then i grab behind his neck pull his head down and I go for the knee strike. Bam! Straight into the solar plexus or behind, oh sorry, between his legs if I can reach down there. Because it's harder for him to grab my leg when you do a low knee technique. Now at this point, some of you might recognize that the move looks exactly like the famous Karate Kid movie technique. And that's actually the functional application of this crane stance. Does it work? If to right, you can defense. So again, the haymaker comes in, I step inside, bam, I knee. And now from here, an easy takedown is to just push the head down and lift the arm up and spin him around, bam. The second technique that I want to show a classical karate defense to is a tackle, something that is also very common on the street. So let's say somebody rushes in, he bull rushes me and tackles me and tries to take me down. Now, the first thing I wanna do is to lower my center of gravity so he can't lift me up and toss me down. So as I lower my center of gravity, I extend the leg behind me as support so that he can't topple me over. Again, I lower and I go back down. Now at this point, it's easy to just throw, for example, an elbow strike straight to his spine, which might stop the fight right there. But what I wanna show you is the following move. I circle my arms under his armpits and I cross my hands here. And now at this point, all I do is extend and open up my hips as I lift my arms into a technique that looks like it's taken straight out of a kata. Again, we're down here, here, and now this neck crank combined with a chicken wing arm lock is really dangerous. So be careful if you try this at home. And then from here, it's easy to just take him down by just swinging his arms to the side. Carefully, you don't want to dislocate the shoulders, right? Restomp the groin and exit out. Bullshit. Now for the third and final street fighting technique, let's just go to the wall over here. Sometimes you might get attacked by somebody grabbing you rather than throwing a haymaker or tackling you. Now, some people who do this might think that it's a good idea, but for somebody who actually knows what he's doing, it's not a good idea because both of his arms are occupied and he's completely open to an attack from me. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the palms of my hands I'm gonna cup them slightly and I'm gonna slap him across his ears, hopefully shattering his eardrums. You can just duck, right? Ready? Go! Okay, imagine that slamming across both of your ears. Just try it on yourself. Even lightly, it really hurts. So, after I disorientate him with this type of slap and his head is out somewhere out in space, I can then pick one hand over and one hand under to form this kind of shape. As I then twist his head, and very carefully now, because this is very dangerous, to the side to take him down. And of course, some of you out there might recognize this move in this type of a sumo stance or horse stance. And then if you finish off with a double strike, it's straight from a kata known as seipai. And of course, that was the whole purpose of these old original karate forms, to be used against an actual attacker when you apply the techniques according to the real original function. And that's it. Now you know how karate can actually be used in a real street fight by using the tactical advantage of modern sports-based karate and the technical advantage of old-school traditional karate. Because your link to the past is your bridge to the future. And by learning from the old, you can understand the new. 
Train hard, good luck, have fun, and leave a comment if you have any questions.